Please welcome Global Head of VR AR Strategy from Unity Technologies, Tony Parisi. Hello, welcome to Vision 2017. We've got an exciting two days ahead of us. If you were here at last year's Vision, you might remember it was mostly about gaming because the game industry is always the first to jump on any hot new technology. Well, we now know that virtual, augmented, and mixed reality are impacting every aspect of how we work, play, and communicate. This year's vision brings together creators, leaders, and innovators from across industries in a shared exploration, a conversation about what's possible with this awesome new technology. Now, I've been in immersive computing for some time now, a few more years than I'd shared account. So that's why I'm so excited that this technology is finally, really, almost, <laughs> really, almost here. But we all know we have a long way to go before immersive experiences are an essential part of everyone's daily lives. I could talk to you more about this, but I'd actually like to introduce someone who's far more qualified. I've known the Unity founding team for a while now, and I've been so impressed by their focus and their commitment to their core mission. I've recently met the person at the helm, a visionary leader who is the ideal person to make this vision a reality. So I'd like you all to join me in welcoming to the stage Unity CEO, John Riccatello. <laughs> Not dead, buddy. Well, thanks, Tony. So look, we're all here because we're believers. And um, I firmly believe we're in the era where we're going to see the rise of an amazing industry in the world of VR, AR, and mixed reality. And um, I'd like to share with you an, an, a little bit of an analogy. I got backstage with Brendan Arib, the one of the founders of Oculus, and maybe the guy that started the spark of all this thing. Um, I was telling him that the way I see it, um, in the fullness of time, we're going to see the world of visual compute, AR and VR, develop a lot like the internet. Now, today, there's almost 4 billion people with access to the internet. Their access comes by way of PCs. It comes with a smartphone right up against the face. But this industry took about 20 years to develop and get to this massive, massive scale. It's much bigger than anybody ever thought. And I see a world with absolute clarity, a world that you might describe as visual compute. When we're interacting with entertainment experiences, we're interacting with data, we're interacting with our friends, we're interacting with travel, we're right in the middle of the Taj Mahal. And the metaphor that he gave me, and I thought was so apt, is that if you think of it this way, you know, the first time we had a, a screen in our houses, and thank God none of us were born, was television, but that was like 15 feet away. 10 feet away. Um, we then got PCs that were, I don't know, two to three feet away. And now we've got phones in the right here. And we're now about to jump through the screen. It's been a steady progression to get closer and closer to the experience we're interacting with. And we are at the dawn of that age. And I firmly believe that we're going to see literally the biggest industry we've ever seen. It will rival the internet. It's not gonna be something like the size of the game industry or the size of the music industry. It's gonna be the size of everything. A lot of you know Unity, and as a company, as Tony mentioned, we're, we're very much a, a mission-driven company. We talk a lot about developers. We talk a lot about democratizing development. We talk about and do solve you know, some of the hardest problems, and we work very hard to help developers be successful, whether they be in mobile or console or VR and AR. One of the hardest problems we solve is write once and get all of these platforms. You don't have to take platform risk, and you don't have to port to dozens of platforms. We make it easier. Literally, there's a thousand engineers writing core technology for Unity, and you can think of them as your R&D team, your engineering team, except it's probably a little bigger and your R&D or your, your engineering team. And they're working for you day in and day out. And one area they're really focused on is the world of AR and VR. And these are our partners in AR and VR. And look at those companies. Google, Microsoft, Vive and Steam, Oculus, which is Facebook, Sony, PlayStation, Samsung. These are some of the biggest, biggest companies in the world. And it's amazing all that they're doing. Now, 
I'd like to give a step aside for a quick analogy, though. Um, let's go back to the dawn of the game industry, or at least the console game industry, with the introduction of the Atari platform, and you know, those of us can remember Pong. We then saw a, a, sort of a, a table stakes battle between Sega and Nintendo, and ultimately a battle between Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, all bringing hardware to the market. I would argue that these hardware companies created the opportunity for the industry to exist. But I would say it was companies like Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed, EA with Battlefield and FIFA, um, Activision with Call of Duty, Blizzard, other great companies that actually created the industry. These people create the opportunity, and I believe you all will create the industry. Look, content's come a long way, an enormous way. The breadth of content gives me such an enormous amount of con uh, confidence about the future of our industry. I mean, look at some of this stuff. It is truly amazing. And what you're going to see coming in a few minutes is presentations from many content creators and innovators showing you the way. Now, a key observation on this slide is this. I'm going to go back to that analogy about the console industry. So, a lot of us think it's sort of a foregone conclusion that the world of AR and VR is going to be led by behemoth companies. That the, that the advantage, say, that a Disney has in owning Star Wars and owning Spider-Man is just you know, too hard to ignore. They're going to dominate. But that's not the way it's ever worked before, and I don't think that's the way it's going to work this time. So if you go back to that console war that I was talking about, Activision, Take-Two, Ubisoft, and Electronic Arts did not exist at the dawn of the console industry. They responded to the opportunity created by the hardware companies. Or let's look more recently at mobile. At the launch of the iPhone, Supercell didn't exist. Machine Zone didn't exist. King didn't exist. These companies responded to the opportunity, virtually bootstrapped. And I think you have that exact same opportunity today. Now, before you get too excited, and I know there's a lot of excitement to be that next generation company, um, I think we need to think for just a minute. Now, about a year and a half ago, I put this slide up. Um, I called it the gap of disappointment. And what I was contrasting was my expectation for how the industry would develop versus the analyst forecasts. And the analyst forecasts were exuberant and super aggressive. And the point that I was trying to make is, the hardware and software wasn't ready for prime time, and it wasn't going to take off like this. And that in the long term, I believed the industry, in fact, would exceed the opportunity that any of these analysts saw coming. The key point is, I think, in long term, it develops like the internet. Go back to analyst forecast of 1999, 2000. The internet was going to be a sector in our economy. You know, damn it, it is the economy. And I think that's where we're going with visual compute. Now, the analysts, as clever as they were, they took the slide, lowered their forecast a little bit, and they called it, I think it was a trough of disillusionment. Um, it sort of rhymes with a gap of disappointment. But here's a couple quick thoughts. Thought number one, if you know any analysts, pigeonhole them, show them the slide. It doesn't do us any favors to see forecasts we're not going to make. The second thing is, when they write about their trough, their gap, or whatever it is they're talking about, remind them of this as well. While they had forecast $5 billion in 2016, the industry achieved $2.5 billion in 2016 from a near zero start in 2015. That is stupendous. So measured on the wrong curve, it feels like the industry came up short. Can you think of many industries that went from a zero start to $2.5 billion in one year? That is absolutely staggering. And we should be super thankful that it's been that successful thus far. And the promise in front of us is huge. Now, one point that I put in here in terms of time frame, and I'm about to talk to you about time frame, is that in, at least in my vision of the world, the industry in its actual performance will cross the line of the analyst and exceed what the analysts are saying by the year 2023. And what I'd like to do now is talk to you about some of the precedent conditions that need to be true for this to happen, and I believe they're happening as we speak now. Now, the first point is price point. And in order for us to have a mass market, a truly global mass market, I think what we need to see is a price point under $1,000 
for the CPU, the GPU, the head-mounted display on the controller. We're not there today. Yes, you can strap it to your PC or your phone and get there, but you can't get there all in. And I think it's an absolute requirement for us to hit a price point under $1,000, and I think it's a requirement to have a pathway down to a significantly lower price. That is in the works, I've seen it, I know what's gonna happen. I'm not responsible for those price decisions, but I know that the leaders in this industry want to see this happen and will in fact make this happen. The second point that I'd point out is mobility. Now, what I picture is something that I think a lot of you picture. And it's not a head-mounted display with a big cable off the back of your head strapped to a 30-pound uh, water-cooled tower PC. I picture a world where it's all on board. It's either in your head-mounted display, it may be a mobile phone strapped into your back pocket, but what you're gonna get is the full kit. You're gonna be mobile. It's not just a mobile device, but you, in fact, will be mobile. And whether it's AR and VR, you're gonna be wandering around your house or whatever environment you're experiencing this, this amazing thing in, and you're gonna feel safe because if it's AR, you're gonna see the stuff there, and if it's VR, we're gonna see inside-out cameras bringing that world to you. Now, maybe your coffee table will be retextured as Mount Doom, I don't know. Whatever it is, you're gonna know where it is and you'll be trusted well enough that if you see a chair, you will in fact be able to sit in it. So criteria one, under $1,000. Criteria two, truly mobile. And the third criteria that I think we need to get to is price point. Now, excuse me, price point, wake up. Content. And um, in, in the world of content, I want to make a simple point. For you to make the investments that are required to dream the big dream, to get the VC dollars or to empty your bank account, to be that startup company that's going to create the future, you know, I'm not gonna get into the math here today, but trust me on this. You need the promise of at least 100 million devices in the market for you to find a market for your product that is big enough to justify those investments. And that requires the first two criteria, but it really requires that marketplace reality. And what we haven't yet seen is presentations from you know, Google and Facebook and Oculus and others that show us how this is gonna happen. And this is, I guess, you know, my peek at the inside for all of you. I've seen these pieces, and I know they come together in the beginning of 2018 and will be here in full flower in 2019. So I have high confidence that this market starts to accelerate because these things will be true. And when these things will be true, it'll start to accelerate. Now I know that's a little bit of a tautology, but it is in fact the way it's going to work. And it starts to take off 12 and 24 months from now in a way that I think satisfies all of our greatest ambitions. Now, I want to wrap up with a couple of very, very simple thoughts. It's real this time. VR and AR is, in fact, going to be the final frontier. It's the thing that's going to matter. It is going to change the world, and it's going to be huge. The second thing I would say is if you know anybody that works at Oculus or works at Google on the VR business or Microsoft on HoloLens or other products that they're building or Samsung or Sony, you know, whether it's Andy House or it is Clay Bavor at Google or Brendan Arriva from, from, from Oculus or other visionaries, thank them. They've invested billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars to create the opportunity. And then look down the aisle in the row that you're in and imagine that that person, whether it be you or someone else, is gonna be the one that creates the industry. I'm confident you will, and I look forward to working with you as you do. Thank you.